In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we have today the Gospel telling us about the third time Jesus appeared to his apostles and disciples to confirm their faith in the mystery of his resurrection. On this Sunday we have a special, uh, special text of the Holy Gospel and the discourse, the whole discourse is about the Church as the only mystical body of Christ. Let us dip into this text in order to understand the meaning of it and to see how important it is to be living members of this Church. First of all, we realize that John, the beloved disciple, has a kind of primacy in loving Christ. He was the first who believed that Jesus was risen from the dead when he went with Peter to the sepulchre and did not find the body of Christ. He just saw the shroud laying on the stone, empty of course, and he, in seeing that kind of shroud and the way it was on the, on the stone, he believed and remembered the words of our Lord. And now, in seeing that miracle, because they were fishing all the night long, but they, was, they were not able to catch any fish, now, by obeying Jesus' word, they caught many, many fish. And John understood that it was the Lord. It is the Lord. He has a primacy in loving Christ, in the primacy of love. But we see something else today. Peter, the foundation stone of the Church, has a primacy, a primacy in leading the Church, which is a kind of primacy in loving Christ too. And by Peter's love, all the Church has to be brought to, fear, to full communion with Christ. Why? Let us understand this beautiful dialogue between Christ and Peter. Jesus asked him for the first time, Peter, do you love me more than these others do? Do you love me more? And this for three times. Why three times? St. Augustine says Peter has now to repair what he did in betraying the Lord three times. I do not know him during the Passion. Now by saying three times, I do love you, he is making uh, reparation of that sin. But there is something else in this dialogue. In English, we do not realize the nuances hidden in these questions and answers. The word used by Christ to say, do you love me, is the Greek word agape. So, the love here reaches its apex, because agape is the mystery of God. And agape means communion. Do you love me by being in communion with me, by sharing my life in my mystery of love? Peter does not understand the meaning of this agapic love and answers by saying, I love you. But the word he uses is the love of phileo, from which philosophy comes. The love of friendship. I love you as an ideal of my life, as I can love the wisdom in knowing things. But Jesus is asking for another love, the love of communion, the love which makes 
one. Peter does not understand. I love you. And Jesus again, the second time. Do you love me again with the same word? Do you love me with this highest love? The God is love, we say. Deus caritas. Yes. In Latin, caritas is this love of communion. And Peter does not understand yet. Yes, Lord, I love you, but in this less perfect way, by a love of friendship, kind of ideal, but without saying yet, I love you by giving up my life for you. The third time, Jesus, who understands that Peter cannot be yet ready for that, as Peter with the word, the less perfect word, do you love me with this love of phileo, philanthropy, uh, love of friendship? And Peter says, yes, Lord, I love you. But he was upset. Why he was upset? Because of this continuous way of asking him. And Jesus in the end says, uh, follow me. The only way Peter can understand this, this kind of love is by following our Lord. In fact, Jesus is foretelling now the way he would glorify God by dying as Jesus did on the cross, by being crucified but upside down, because he was not worthy to die as Jesus did. In fact, Jesus is telling him the way of his death. When you were young, you put on your own belt, you were free. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands on the cross. And somebody else will put a belt around you, will tie you to the cross, to be nailed. As I was, do you love me this way? This is the meaning of that first question. Are you ready to give up your life for me, for my sake, for my church? Then, if you are, feed my sheep. Then, gathered my lambs, guide the whole church into this communion with me. Not a kind of ideal, I love you, Jesus, with words, nice words, with a poem of life. No. The love is very practical. Do you love me by giving up your life? By being brought where you do not want to go? by denying yourself, and even, this is exceptional, but it is very significant, by dying, as I did, by being crucified. Peter will understand this by living and finally by the end of his life. But he has been entrusted with this important primacy in the Church, Feed my sheep. Look after my lambs. This is the primacy of Peter in the church, of the Pope. This is why we have the Pope. Not only to, to have a representative, a very powerful man, respected by all the powerful men of this world, a politician, a social leader saying something nice about migrants. No, this is not the Pope's task. The Pope's task is to guide the whole Church into this communion with Christ by giving up his life. Do you love me more than these others do? And we have the discourse of Christ about the Church. This is a discourse about the only mystical body of Christ. Why? There are many symbols, actually, 
in this discourse of Christ. The net, the net cast out into the sea, the net which by Jesus' command was able to catch many, many fish. Even the number is important and it is recorded, 153. How can John remember after some years when he wrote the Gospel, even the number of fish caught on that day? Because the number is alluding to something else. It's a symbol of all the faithful in the Church. All the Christians gathered into this one net, the one mystical body of Christ. And the net, despite the amount of fish, was broken. The Church is one and undivided. The Church did not break ever. Why? Because the Church is the only mystical body of Christ. And the Church is where, there where Peter is gathering all the fish into this net and dragging. It is Peter who drags the net ashore. It is Peter who has this task of bringing the Church to communion, into communion with Christ, with this love of agape, this communion of love. Then the Church is there where Peter is, and Peter is there where the Church is. This is a kind of interdependence. Peter and the Church are intimately connected one another. The Church cannot be without Peter. And the reason of having Peter, the Pope, is because of the Church. To gather into this one and undivided Church all the fish, all the sheep, all the lambs, the lambs, the sheep, the fish, which belong to Christ, the Lamb of God, who was slain, but it, he is alive, he is the reason, Lord. Peter, do you love me? So let us pray for Peter, for the Pope. Of course, when we say the Pope, we do not mean the person of the Pope the Pope Bergoglio, the Pope Ratzinger, we mean the Supreme Pontiff, the one who has been entrusted with this important task to guide us, to lead us into this communion with Christ. We respect, we are obedient to all the Popes in the Church, from Peter to Francis, without any break. People, communities have broken away from the Church, but the Church is not broken. The net is not broken. And now, my dear brothers and sisters, the question is addressed to us too. Jesus is asking us today, on this specific Sunday, do you love me? But keep in mind, the word is the first. Do you love me with this love? Are you ready to give up your life for my sake? This is not only for the Pope, for bishops or for priests. This is for all Christians. And of course, we have our life to answer this question. Follow me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.